I'm here in sunny, beautiful Cannes in the south of France for the next 10 days to attend the huge Cannes Film Festival this year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's rewind a second. The Cannes Film Festival. Hands down the biggest and most prestigious film festival in the world. Home to A-list celebrities, red carpets, crazy parties, and some of the wealthiest individuals on the planet. Cancelled in 2020 and postponed to July 2021, the 74th Festival de Cannes, chaired by the one and only Spike Lee, promised to be an incredible 11 days for those lucky enough to be invited to attend. And in 2021, I was one of them. I was there as a PA and events manager for some filmmakers I know, so my primary allegiance was to helping them out rather than to going to film premieres, which I was totally cool with. So I got the train down to London, stayed in an Airbnb overnight, then after a negative Covid test that allowed me to enter France, I flew to Nice via Heathrow the following morning. Immediately, Nice airport was like nowhere I've ever flown into before. Maybe it's only like this during the festival, but the place was overrun with private jets and Rolls Royces. That's gotta be our Uber right there. We then got in an Uber to the villa in Cannes where five of us would be sharing for the duration of the festival. The villa was insane. It's literally called uh, the Villa de Art Nouveau and no prizes for guessing why. It was like staying in a museum with priceless artifacts and furnishings everywhere you looked. Initially, I was supposed to stay in this attic style mezzanine, but it turned out to be full of mattresses. So I took the sofa bed in the dining room instead. Heading down to the waterfront, the festival is held in a gigantic purpose-built Palais de Festival, which is right next to a whopping great casino. We picked up our official badges, bags and accreditation and scouted out the red carpet which was getting set up just outside. A stone's throw from the festival's own cinema on the beach. That afternoon we headed over to the makeshift American Pavilion that year, which was in a big hotel room overlooking the beach, for one of the guys I was staying with to give a talk to the American film students there. And then we spent yesterday evening having a huge meal out with 20 people, all big film folks rode on a big ferris wheel that's just next to the marina. I'm sleeping on a sofa bed in the dining room which has no blinds or curtains so the sun's just beaming down on me as soon as it hits like 7am in the morning. So I, I went for a run, I went just sort of explored the, uh, the town. There's a lighthouse out by the marina that I really want to see if I can get out to and then I think I'll just go along the promenade for a bit. All right, well, I think this is my halfway point. 20 miles in, probably turn around. I had worse views behind me. Whoa, pigeons, slow down. It's seven in the morning. Oh, Johnny Depp. Yes, bring it up. I've never seen a cliff framed so nicely. Just now, I saw a bunch of articles about a huge like red carpet event last night with Adam Driver, Helen Mirren, and a Bella Hadid, which we were just completely unaware of and missed entirely. Also, this place that we're staying in is crazy. It's a great location. It's right in the middle of everything. And it's also like a, just a really nice place. I mean, look, it's just, there's flowers everywhere. One of two hot tubs. Get a load of this view. I mean, come on. There's a castle on a hill. You can just about see the top of the Ferris wheel over there. And that's just, that's the marina. That's this building right here is the Palais. That's where all the red carpet events and screenings and things happen. This is my room. <laughs> and then above the bed, oh, what a view. This is just, that's just wallpaper. That's not actually like a secret garden, but. There is a peacock. So my job while I'm here is basically a personal assistant. My first job of the day is al already the case. Dave left his official can pass at the house and now is at an event and can't get it. So I'm currently off to deliver this badge to him. The festival provided all attendees with PCR COVID tests, which we had to do every two days in order to be let into the festival. So we did that in the afternoon, came back negative, and then we headed over to the famous Grand Hotel for the evening. 
It's currently 10 to midnight, Wednesday the 7th of July, my first full day in Cannes. Everyone else went to get drinks at the, uh, the Grand Hotel, but with our big party event happening tomorrow, I felt like I needed to bank some sleep. So I bailed. That's my room. One of the main reasons why I'm here in the first place is because the filmmaker guys I'm staying with are the organizers behind the famous Cannes Pajama Party which has been running for several years and is uh, an exponentially growing event. Uh, we've already got 250 people on the guest list. I've spent the last three hours this morning doing all kinds of behind the scenes organizational stuff, getting the invites ready and emailed out, liaising with all the different organizational people involved, collecting deliveries. We had Casamiga's tequila gave us a bunch of tequila. We've got loads of stuff to be arranged. The party is at seven. So in six and a half hours, and there is so much left to do. But hopefully, by then, everything will be sorted. We've got a huge pajama company sponsoring the whole event, which is great. Partnering with a charity called Awareness Ties. Hopefully we'll be able to spread more awareness for various causes through them. That's, that's what's going on. I'm not doing a whole lot of film festival related things these last few days. I mean, there have been a bunch of red carpet events, there have been a bunch of screenings. Uh, Bong Joon-ho is here, the Parasite director. There was a thing with Matt Damon, I think, earlier, Jodie Foster. None of that stuff is remotely on our radar because this is what's going on. The pajama party took me and a team of about 10 people all afternoon to set up. Uh, we had blown all of the sponsorship money and then some on the event. So we had a DJ, catering, drinks, a red carpet, Getty photographers, the full shebang. It, it's fully just pouring down with rain now. Here we are, hours before the pajama party. That is blue sky on the horizon. Party starts in two hours. The, the second van this full as well? Uh, the second one, yes. Starting to come together. This looks great. Yes. We also had our own videographer, so here's a quick highlight reel that I put together with some of his footage that he took from the event. great. That's all new to me. I didn't really get to see or attend the event myself. As one of the organizers, I was just sort of running around behind the scenes, fighting metaphorical fires all night. Here are some parts that weren't included in the highlight reel that more accurately reflect what I was doing all night. We have like 250 people on the guest list, but it is absolutely more than that already. And it's like not even halfway through. That is wild. But there are like the most famous looking people I've ever seen without actually recognizing them. They just look like they're famous. I guess that's kind of the idea. Okay, I just find my drone. It just lost connection completely. Um, that's it. It's just... I hope it's returning to home, because otherwise that thing is a goner. I'm just going to try and catch it. Alright, come here, you little doofus. Whew. 
Alright, that was a close one. I'm gonna not do that again. This is the photographer himself getting his photo taken. <laughs> this is incredible. There was an actually fairly famous Emmy Award winning actress at the party who got absolutely sloshed and had to be fairly recalcitrantly taken away by ambulance. I've obviously blurred out her face to protect her identity, but that was quite a sight. The police were there too to help sort of persuade her to get in the ambulance. The French Rosas showed up later in the evening as well, demanding that I ask the DJ to turn the music down, which was something that I had asked the DJ to do several times that evening because it, it was fairly loud. But the DJ didn't really listen, maybe they couldn't hear me over the, the noise of the music. However, when I then went back up to mention that there were police at the gates, they got the message and turned the music down fairly swiftly after that. Party's over like an hour ago, but people only just left. The following morning, we did a bit of cleanup after the party. How's the aftermath? It's really not bad. It's mainly just napkins. And I found out that I had been briefly featured on the Instagram page of Hoffit Golan, a fashion mogul with three million Instagram followers. Then headed over to the International Pavilion tents on the beachfront, as well as the Marche du Film in the upstairs of the Palais. These can playing cards, these glitzy golden cards, might be the fanciest things I've ever seen. If you whip these out in a poker game, no one is taking you seriously. I've been invited to a, uh, a Forbes party this evening. Okay, to Forbes we get. After the fairly mind-boggling experience of the Forbes party, we then headed over to a nearby house party to meet up with some friends. It was at said house party where I met the ex-lead singer of Spandau Ballet, a Scottish guy called Ross William Wilde, who was quite a personality. To Brian, to Brian took me out to Germany and we did three private gigs out in Germany, me, him and Roger. Spandau Ballet, I fronted them as well. A few hours there and we were all pretty good. Uh, it was already like 3am, so we hopped in an Uber back to the centre of Cannes and went home. The following day, we explored more of the town of Cannes and had lunch next to a guy who had his own little personal documentary crew following his every move. Today's Saturday, the Forbes party thing was last night. Crazy, just come back from lunch and now is my first thing that I'm doing alone this whole festival so far. I'm meeting up with some American Pavilion students and I think we're just gonna wander around and get a sense of what's actually going on. We checked out some events in the Palais saw some more people live streaming themselves and went sculpture spotting before heading back to the villa. Okay, so this evening, Saturday the 10th, we are hosting the after party for a film called Lady of Heaven, Lady from Heaven, something like that, which is an Arabic film. They didn't have an after party event at all, so we are hosting their event at our villa. There's a DJ there, things are getting set up in the garden. The Lady of Heaven party was a really cool one. Another red carpet, but a distinct lack of pajamas. After that, we headed over to the famous Majestic Hotel, which was notable for having possibly the most expensive drinks menu that I have ever seen. Then we just sort of wandered the streets of Cannes in the wee hours of the morning before heading to bed. So many people. Oh my god, it's 3 a.m. It's another beautiful day here in Cannes. It's uh, Sunday today, the 11th of July. It's already like 30 degrees and pretty, a, a bit of a scorcher. Uh, the last two nights have been consecutive back-to-back, -back, like 5 a.m. finishes, just going to loads and loads of different events. So we've been generally sleeping in and then going out for like basically lunch for breakfast. And this afternoon, I've got some meetings. ex Spandau Ballet guy was like, oh, I'm having a boat party. And I was like, okay. So we hopped in an Uber and drove across the bay to this rock star's boat party. Sorry, not sorry. Champagne was dished out, I had a drink, and we all had a swim in the Mediterranean, being overlooked by, so I'm told, uh, George Clooney's Hilltop Mansion. I've got to go to like a screening at some point. I need to see a film. This is like the whole can thing. I haven't actually been to a red carpet yet. That needs fixing. I'm going to try and see the French Dispatch on Tuesday. We're hosting another party here tonight for Fashion Insider, but I think it'll be a fairly small affair. Keep reading the magazine as well. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
England versus Italy game is happening during the party, so I just put it on the dining room TV. And... 1 0 up, I think. It's going to go pretty well. Oh. Okay, I'm not going to mention the result of the, uh, <laughs> the final because we could hear from the balcony every time either team scored a penalty. <laughs> There would just be this eruption of horns and honks and people just screaming from windows. This is Italy winning the cup. No one cares. No one. My sleep schedule for the Cannes Film Festival so far has been like 5 a.m. till 11 a.m. every day. So I'm now having breakfast at half past one in the afternoon uh, ahead of a few business related meetings this afternoon and then a pretty low-key affair after party for a film called Neptune's Frost this evening at the villa. Monday the 12th of July, so we've got another five days here. That we may stay an extra two days just to avoid the quarantine in the UK because that's all ending on the 19th. I also kind of want to investigate this big market thing. Aha, Le Marché, oui oui. Now that is what I call lunch. How do I get out of this building? This is, this is not where I need to be. That suitcase is five grand. The Neptune's Frost party didn't get off to the greatest of starts. The filmmakers aren't actually here yet. And it's like, it started two hours ago. Though we did get an incredible private performance by this young piano prodigy. Half one, party's over, everyone's leaving. It is 3 a.m. All the guests from that party have now left. I think the word to wrap up that party is disgruntling. I mean, it was a good event. Everyone who came enjoyed themselves, but it was just chaotically disorganized. The organizer himself arrived almost two hours late. He arrived with no, like, cups to serve beverages in. I had to go out to a shop at midnight to try and find cups. We're going on a paper cup hunt. That's the... <laughs> How can they have every other paper related culinary product but not cups? In the meantime, guests were just taking like these priceless antique teacups from inside this thing to just like serve wine in. As like the residents of this villa, we were sort of obligated to stay here and keep an eye on things. But in the meantime, some of our friends from the American Pavilion were off at a red carpet screening of Wes Anderson's new film, uh, French Dispatch. You know, we, we could have been there at the premiere with uh, Timothy Chalamet, Bill Murray, and, and yet we were here trying to find cups. <laughs> from a local store. The organizers of this event organized zero cleanup crew. So us residents at the villa before going to bed have to clean up everything for him. Kind of a first world problem, but. It is spectacularly windy today. We've just spent two hours doing conference related work, which was meant to happen this morning, but I slept until 2 p.m. So all of the time allocated this morning just went yeah, to, to catching up on sleep, which is, you know, pretty important. We've got about 15 minutes until we leave for an event tonight, and then we're off to the infamous and extremely expensive and fancy Hotel du Cap. Enigmatic as ever was apparently completely closed and we were turned away at the gate. No, 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 the gentleman said it's just totally closed. So we quickly hatched together a plan with a bunch of uh, the Americans to get pizza at a fancy pizza place at nigh on midnight at this point, back in the center of Cannes. It was there that we found out that some friends of ours had had a similar idea and had gone to Hotel du Cap for the night and had been let in and had had a lovely, wonderful evening there. They must just not have liked the look of us. Why, why would they not let us in? So tonight is Wednesday the 14th of July, which here in France is Bastille Day. The sun is quickly setting. As soon as it does, we are expecting some hell of fireworks. What a view to look over the marina and the center of Cannes and the castle and see this, the fireworks. We invited a bunch of friends around. They're supposed to start arriving at 9.30. It's currently 9.29. They have begun. Oh my God. Whoa. Cheers. It's a pretty good 
fireworks. Once the fireworks were over, our lovely resident film producer Yvette whipped out an acoustic guitar out of nowhere and just started singing some songs for us, which was a lovely way to round out the evening. And sitting with the fan, telling tales just don't happen anymore. 3.30 a.m. Bastille Day party. I hope today's gonna be incredible because we are in an hour getting the train to Monte Carlo, Monaco, and are gonna spend the entire afternoon doing all of the Monte Carlo things. Hotel de Paris, Casino Royale, the Hermitage. Uh, we're going to an event which we've been invited by the founder of the Monaco Charitable Film Festival to go to. There are 16 American film students who are also here in Cannes coming with us. And we're just gonna grab lunch and then go straight to the station. It's gonna be insanely good. The train station. Monaco 10 minute trip coming soon. I've never been on a double decker train. But in that case, we should go upstairs. It looks exactly the same as can. Literally identical. Monaco was a surreal place to walk around. It reminded me a little bit of Mayfair in London, in that you couldn't sneeze without hitting a half million dollar supercar. That's a real car, that's fully the Batmobile. Ridiculously fancy hotels and Michelin star restaurants were on every single street corner, and the entire place just oozed money. Plus, the Monaco Grand Prix track markings were just there on the streets as we were walking around. We sat down at Café de Paris and had extremely overpriced drinks before walking down to the marina via some wacky statues and gardens. It's like a miniature Jabba the Hutt oh, no, with huge spider legs. <laughs> What's that about? I don't know. I'm horrified, but I'm intrigued. It is Monster Zinc. So where are the big yachts? The biggest of all the yachts in the marina was Arcadia owner Sir Philip Green's Lionheart. Hi. We headed through the streets to a shopping mall and bought some extortionate macaroons before heading to the concert which we'd been invited to in the belly of one of the fancy waterfront hotels. It was pretty groovy, especially the keyboardist. The Buddha bar across the road was home to the most expensive sushi I've ever eaten, but talk about ambiance. Then, of course, no trip to Monaco could be complete without a visit to Casino Royale. How many fingers am I holding up? Hmm, I wonder if when we're in an affluent area. And it only rained a little bit. Lovely weather. However, when we got to the train station to go home at like 9 p.m. In the, in the evening, all of the trains were like, oh, 20 minutes late, 30 minutes delayed. 40 minutes delayed. All the trains to Cannes have been canceled and then all the buses didn't exist, so we're taking taxis. And Uber doesn't, isn't a thing in Monaco, it's not allowed in Monaco, so we had to walk to France. Four Ubers at midnight, which cost like 150 euros each to get home to Cannes. Uber from Monaco to Cannes. All right, back in Cannes. <laughs> Thank you, Uber driver. A slightly less positive end to what was a pretty positive day. Today is Friday. I'm partaking in a bunch of meetings this afternoon, but then this evening is actually my first and only red carpet event to see a film called Les Entraquis. So the red carpet uh, event tonight starts in one hour. Hopefully the rain stops for the red carpet. At least it's cooler so it's not going to be like a sweltering red carpet like it has been the last few days. But this is kind of like the last main day in Cannes. A lot of people have already left, a lot of people are leaving tonight or tomorrow, so this is kind of the last big hurrah. We've delayed our flights from the 17th to the 19th because on the 19th uh, travel restrictions end, so to avoid having to quarantine unnecessarily we've just moved our flights back two days. Can we take another second to admire this view? Red carpet time, baby. Okay, so the Cannes Film Festival red carpet system works in two ways. First way is if you're a famous person, 
you get to walk all the way down the red carpet and have your photos taken by paparazzi on both sides and then enter the palais up the stairs. The second way is for plebeians like myself, who are quietly escorted down the side of the red carpet so as to not get in the way of the photographers, and then hurried inside the palais with a strict no camera policy on the red carpet. Once inside the palais, you get to walk up this really nice fancy spiral staircase where you can look over the red carpet from a safe distance. That's the thing. And marvel at some of the more interesting outfit choices. Let's head into the theatre. The Grand Lumiere Theatre is absolutely gigantic and every single seat is filled. It was kind of strange seeing everybody in masks, but that's just the times that we live in. As people arrive, they have the red carpet live stream going on on the big screen and then everybody gets up and applauds as the director and the stars of the film walk in. It's kind of strange because we haven't watched the film yet. We don't know if it's going to be good. It could be really bad. Spoiler alert. It was pretty bad. Les Entraquis was a pretty boring French-speaking film which didn't really go anywhere. Almost sent me to sleep several times. After the film, there were a bunch of guerrilla photographers outside the exit who would take photos of you and then immediately charge you considerable sums of money to view the photos and have them. The following morning, we were serenaded over lunch by an orange-clad jazz band whose washboard player was unbelievably out of time. You want to come to the red carpet with me? I am off to technically my second red carpet event. Today is Saturday the 17th, which is the official last day of the festival. Tonight they're holding like the closing ceremony. I think there's going to be some awards. I've got tickets again to the balcony, which has a terrible view of anything that's going on, but I'll be in the same room. I'm bringing my 360 camera this time. You're not technically supposed to take any videos or photos on the red carpet, but I'm going to try and get some stuff with the 360 camera because I just think it'll look really cool. I'll see what I can do. Busted. After I headed into the theatre, the awards show commenced. It was headed by Spike Lee, who during the ceremony made the very well-publicised gaffe of announcing the main Palm d'Or winner way too early in the ceremony. The film that won the Palm d'Ors to town Wait, 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 no! <laughs> we ended the evening at a funky beach club, which, fun fact, was the exact spot where Elton John's I'm Still Standing music video was filmed. Look at those guys, just chilling on the wall. They're your sons? Yeah. Who's the father? The following day was our final full day in Cannes, so we decided to make the most of it by exploring the old town area and making our way up to the church on the hill. This is the old town part of Canada. It's really amazing. These streets with all the shutters and the... Wow. I actually slept through breakfast this morning, but apparently the people who I was supposed to go to breakfast with just casually met the billionaire mayor of the old town. Missed an opportunity there slightly. It's hot. It's really hot. It's like 90 something and broad middle of the day heat. The views are spectacular from up here. Wow, this place is crazy. Ah, what beautiful drone shots. Wouldn't it be a shame if the drone were to just suddenly lose connection and instead of returning to its takeoff point as per usual, it decides to land in place. I think it's just landing. Where's it going to land? Oh my god. On that person's balcony. Oh my god, stop! 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 <laughs> okay, it fully just disconnected and landed on uh, someone's balcony. So we've got to go and grab it now. <laughs> That's so funny. It's just fully landed on that person's balcony. Something broke up. Yeah, I think one of the propellers fell off. All right, well, rescue mission for the drone, I guess. Fortunately, there were a lovely couple called Charlie and Desi nearby who were filming their holiday to Cannes, who had witnessed the drone accident. And so for the recovery operation, I had my own personal documentary team. Shout out to Charlie and Desi for sending me their footage and also for picking up pieces of drone that were just strewn across the streets. Um, I've linked their channel in the description. I stuck up my 360 camera and sure enough, there was the drone right in the middle of the balcony, uh, which was too high to sort of climb up onto. I knocked on some dude's door and asked him to check his balcony for a drone, but it turned out that his was not the right one. It's uh, this one around here. <laughs> 
Uh, he directed me to a few different doors. Is that their, their door on the side? I think so. But no one was in, so I left a note on the one that looked the most likely. <laughs> if it ever comes back. Shout out to Paige for capturing one of my failed attempts at throwing handwritten notes with my phone number on it up onto the balcony with the drone. Uh, I did eventually succeed, and that was really my only hope. It's amazing how I managed to miss this entire giant purple tree. I mean, I can think of worse places to land a drone. This is pretty beautiful. It's got a great view. We shall see <laughs> if it comes back. We headed back to the villa for a celebratory dinner, both for the end of a wonderful festival and because I'd hit 3,000 subscribers that evening, which was cool. My hopes for the drone were dwindling. But then... Okay, so I was just eating and I got a call on my phone. The woman was like, your drone is on my balcony. So now I'm just going back to get my drone. My hopes of getting it back were so slim. We've got a huge amount of wine and rosé in our fridge. Killing two birds with one stone a little bit. I'm just bringing her over some rosé to say thank you. But I was like, you know, we're leaving tomorrow. I'm gonna have to pay someone to ship it to England for me. This is the best possible scenario. It's been like five hours since the event happened when I lost it. Here I am. Oh, whoa. Well, if losing my drone has meant that I get to experience this sunset, kind of glad it happened. That is spectacular. Wonder if I should get a uh, drone shot of this. Dude, that is literal cannibalism. That is the fateful balcony. It's not there, so they must be saving it for me. You too, thank you. I got it! Yes! Alright, this is it. This is our last couple of hours in, in Cannes. I figured I'd go for one last quick run because it's such a nice day. Today is the 19th of July. We were supposed to initially fly back to the UK on the 17th, but then they were like, oh, on the 19th, anybody from Amber Countries doesn't need to quarantine when they get back to the UK. And we were like, sweet, let's just delay our flights two days. Not even two days ago. They're actually like, well, we're gonna, we're gonna do that, but we're gonna do it for everybody except France. So we still have to quarantine for like a full week when we get back, despite being fully vaccinated. Gotta control the spread of the beta variant. Well, there goes the red carpet, I guess. I've kind of run out of plan. And that was that. We packed up our bags. So long, Villa de Art Nouveau. It's been real. And got a new bit to the airport. Here at the uh, VIP lounge in Nice Airport, our flight to Brussels boards in about 10 minutes. Completely empty, but amazing lounge with free food, a lot of it. Uh, well, we flew to Brussels, had a long layover. I'm in Brussels airport for the next six hours. Again, in the VIP lounge, which is lovely. The amount of free food I've eaten is kind of disgusting. Manchester. <laughs> and then I got home later that evening. And there you go. That was Can. Hopefully you enjoyed this long overdue recollection of a crazy two weeks. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>